Hi, I am Bianca Cox from the Center for Environmental Sciences at Hasselt University. In this video abstract, I'll give a short summary of our paper entitled Ambient Air Pollution Related Mortality in Dairy Cattle. Does it corroborate human findings? The short-term association between outdoor air pollution and mortality in humans has been studied relatively well. However, similar studies in animal populations do not exist, except for some reports of pet and farm animal deaths during historic air pollution episodes. We believe that epidemiologic studies in animal populations can add to the available evidence for humans because animals may be less subject to different types of bias compared to human populations. Now, why did we choose dairy cows? Mortality data are readily available because cattle are subject to a stringent registration procedure because of food safety reasons. Also, all dairy cows have a very similar lifestyle and diet, which makes them less subject to confounding than humans. Also, exposure misclassification is expected to be limited because cows have a restricted daily mobility and a low frequency of migration, and most of them live outdoor during summer. So we use data on all natural dairy cow deaths in Belgium from 2006 to 2009. And we looked at three different pollutants. Ozone, particulate matter with diameter less than 10 micrometer, and nitrogen dioxide. We used air pollution estimates at the level of the municipality, because farm addresses were not available. We applied a time-stratified case crossover design using conditional logistic regression. To account for potential mortality displacement as well as delay defects, we combined the case crossover design with distributed lag models, and we used a maximum lag of 25 days. We also investigated effect modification by season by using time-varying distributed lag models. And we did this because some human studies have found larger associations between air pollution and mortality in summer than in winter. Moreover, free-ranging cows are mostly on pasture during summer, whereas they are continuously in the stable during winter. Belgium is one of the most polluted countries in Europe. The average concentrations of ozone, PM10 and NO2 in the warm season were 81, 25 and 15 microgram per cubic meter, cubic meter respectively. The corresponding concentrations in the cold season were 48, 27 and 21 microgram per cubic meter. This figure shows the estimated relative risks of dairy cow mortality for a 10 microgram per cubic meter increase in air pollutant concentrations. During the warm season, we observed acute as well as delayed increases in mortality associated with air pollution. We also found some evidence for short-term mortality displacement, often referred to as harvesting. The estimate for two-day ozone was 1.2%, and the estimates for same-day PM10 and NO2 were 1.6 and 9.2% respectively. When we look at the cumulative estimates over 25 days, which take into account harvesting and delayed effects, these estimates were considerably larger than the acute effects for ozone and PM10, but not for NO2. In the cold season, however, we only observed increased mortality risks associated with same-day exposure to NO2 and with 26-day exposure to ozone. So, to conclude, our study showed an association between outdoor air pollution and mortality in dairy cows, with stronger evidence for the summer than for the winter season. Our study also provides further evidence that air pollution-related mortality goes beyond short-term harvesting and that the adverse response to air pollution can persist weeks after the exposure. Our findings for cattle are actually quite similar to those for humans, which we think reinforces the evidence on the plausibility of causality. We hope you enjoy our paper and thank you for watching this video.